With that, I'm going to bring up our next two presenters. And as you can see on the program, we were, we're having George Gadabush, our Vice President of Technology and Product Sales, and Ivan Amana, our Chief Information Officer. You've just been upgraded because now we have Natalie McClaskey. Ivan had some travel issues, not able to get here. Natalie, McCl Natalie McClaskey, our Director of Product Development. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Good. All right, where's our? All right. All right. Thank you, Natalie. We did get an upgrade. I know that uh, Tori earlier said that uh, Ivan was a genius, but Natalie's even better, so it's good. <laughs> He's taught me well. I'm happy to be here today and stand in front of all of you and talk about some of our new exciting innovations. Here Absolutely. So let me start off here. Is this going to work? No. Magic. It's old green makes it go forward. Got it. There we go. All right. So we start off the presentation this morning when Mike mentioned changes. And nothing really change, changes faster than technology. There's always changes going on there. And I think everybody in this room feels like they grew up with technology every day, but probably is really true for the millennials, the Gen Xers. Uh, but us older folks, we remember things a little differently. They're a little bit more manual. We remember TVs that look like this, right? Anybody? And others that don't recognize that at all? And we were particularly excited when we could actually change the channels without getting out of the seat. So that was a major improvement in technology. So I know some of the uh, millennials may picture us older folks like this, but what I really want to point out is technology, it's always evolving, it's always changing, but it's more than just microprocessors and hard drives and things like that. It is solutions that were created to solve current issues. And I really want to lead up to how that impacts travel and how we have developed solutions for that. But first, the history of technology itself. 300 or 3 million years ago, the first tools, cavemen, whoever they were, were making stone tools, knives, hammers, things like that. That was a technology at that time. And then, what's that? 1 million years ago, fire. Obviously very important for survival, for warmth, all of that. And iron. Iron was created 1200 BC. Very important, we wouldn't have this fine Hilton Hotel without iron having been invented many, many years ago. Compass, compass also technology at the time, helping us get to where we need to go, navigating, making sure we can get to the right path and where we're headed to. Mechanical clock as well, being able to tell time, making sure we can be on time for those Teams and WebEx meetings, very, very important even today. Be tough. <laughs> printing, right? printing was a big revolution to print those paper tickets that we used to use, remember those a while back? Moving on to railways, obviously a very, very major technological advancement. We wouldn't have Amtrak, Eurorail, all the others without that. So starting to think about travel just a little bit. Also steamboats, we wouldn't have cruise ships, things like that. So again, these are technologies that we created to solve problems that were relevant at that time. The telephone, how else could you call a world travel, travel counselor if telephones weren't invented in 1876? Very important to have that. Automobile, so we have Avis in the house. We've got National, Enterprise, rental cars. They wouldn't be around if the automobile would not have been invented at that time. And then airplanes, of course, with our airplane, our air partners here, Delta and Cutter and others. Again, very important to have had that as well. The computer, major technological advancement, really has led into so many things that we use today. And of course, personalizing that, bringing that back to the actual in-home users, work users, really making an everyday tool, and the internet, of course, opening things up further. So, the history of travel technology, a little bit different there. 1952, the magnetronic reservizer was developed by American Airlines to show seat availability. In 1960, American Airlines Sabre installed the first real-time reservation system. 1973, this is something you don't really think about, but electronic key cards to hotels. When's the last time you got a key to a hotel room? Maybe at a Motel 6, but otherwise <laughs> probably not too likely. So major advancement there. And even telephones, something you also would overlook very easily. But those programmable keys, calling for room service or guest service, whatever you need at the hotel, that was a big advancement as well. Then, self-service booking. Sabre launches that in 1985. Here's the best part using dial-up partners such as CompuServe. Anybody remember that one? Wow. This is a throwback. Go way, way back. Moving forward, Southwest in 1994. Ticketless travel. 
big improvement. Most of us, or those who traveled here today, probably had their mobile boarding pass, so they started implementing that in the mid-90s. Then, of course, internet travel, purchasing the first internet-based ticket for a flight from San Francisco to Las Vegas, done out of a basement in Palo Alto. Again, things we kind of take for granted now, but a major advancement in travel technology. Continental Airlines, first electronic boarding passes. Again, getting things in our hands, being able to utilize them on the go with our devices, with our connectivity. And also, in-flight Wi-Fi. Many of us use that for personal things or for business while you're traveling. Again, major advancement there as well. And then, mobile bag tracking in 2011. Also, bringing that mobile component in so you've got access to your trip information and being able to track your bags during that time. And even the Apple Watch boarding pass was done by Lufthansa in 2015. So great stuff there, but of course, world travel is not left behind because we want to make sure that we're creating solutions, technology solutions that will meet the needs of our clients and our future clients. So the new World Mobile app, the latest iteration, which Natalie and her team have had a big hand in rolling out, that allows you to access every aspect of your trip, your past, your current, your upcoming itineraries, airline check-in, uh, access to your online booking tool, um, around me information when you get to your destination, as well as updating your profile. So very revolutionary there. And then lastly, something else that we mentioned, World VC, that world virtual card solution that allows travelers to use that tap-to-pay functionality on the go wherever they're at when they're checking in. So I'd like to hand over to Natalie here. Thanks, George. And we can go into some more details on those. Awesome. So I'm very excited to talk to all of you guys about World VC. I want to give you a little bit of background for those of you that may not be familiar with the solution. We are currently testing out our World VC solution, and it is certainly, I think, an evolution on the traditional virtual payment methodologies that are out there today. So with our World VC card, it lives in the profile of the traveler. So it's always used as the guarantee card. It's also the same card the traveler is going to use upon arrival at the hotel. Um, another thing that makes this very unique is the fact that it's a multi-use virtual card, right? So it's that card number is not flipping out every time the traveler books a new hotel reservation. Rather, it's one card number. They have that assigned to them for a year. All their hotel bookings are made against it. And then the balance of that card increases and decreases as they book additional hotel reservations against the card. Um, of course, it is locked down, so there's merchant control so that you make sure that it's only used for what it's intended to be used for. Right now, we're focused on hotel bookings, but we do intend to expand it out to additional merchant categories um, here shortly in the future. And then, of course, one of the things that's also really valuable and different from a lot of the other virtual pay solutions out there is that you can put this digital card in your wallet. So who's used tap to pay isn't it amazing? Cool. It's like magic. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can add your World VC card to your digital wallet. And then upon check-in, the traveler can actually use that tap to pay function at the front desk to pay for their hotel reservation. They also have the ability to see that virtual card from our mobile application, World Mobile. Um, they have the ability to pull it up directly on their phone, as well as the option to refax it to the hotel property should we have any sort of friction at the front desk. We all know. The front desk is the big variable when it comes to virtual payments, right? Am I right? Who's experienced that? <laughs> All right. So um, that tap to pay functionality is very different from the other solutions out there on the market. And the fact that it's a multi-use card, meaning you can book multiple hotel reservations against it, um, makes it a lot more. It makes a lot more sense with it being in your wallet. You're not going to add that individual virtual card to your wallet for each unique hotel booking. But when you have it for a year, yeah, that totally makes sense to have in your wallet. Um, then, of course, World Travel also provides reporting on the transactions in partnership with US banks. So we're able to match up your travel data against what was transacted against, pull in all of your custom fields, and take away some of those reconciliation headaches that you may have today. So what's up next with World VC? Um, like I mentioned, we're currently in our testing phase right now. We're going to be finishing that up here by the end of May. So we're getting lots of great feedback from a few of our clients that have uh, been part of the program. We're also working on the ability to automate the load of that virtual card into the user's wallet. So with the tap of a button, we'll be able to get that virtual card from um, our mobile application into their virtual wallet. A lot less friction for the traveler in terms of actually um, getting it into their wallet and being ready to use that tap to pay functionality. 
And then lastly, our goal um, over the summer, we want to make sure that World VC has been refined to a point that we have evolved it to a point that it is ready for full general release. Um, if you'd like to include it for all of your travelers, we'd look to move it to a broader audience this coming summer. All right, World Mobile. This is an amazing solution. I'm sure a lot of you guys are already using it today. Um, we ro started rolling this out at the end of 2022, um, and so far we've already pushed 23,000 profiles into our mobile application. Like George mentioned, it has a lot of awesome features, including integration with different rideshare partners, integrations with your online booking tool, the ability to check into your flight, the ability to blend your, your trips, right? So that Belize experience, um, very supported by our mobile application. You can take a look at different activities that you can do while you're going to a destination, as well as actually book those activities if you'd like to do so. Um, it also allows travelers to edit parts of their profile and it sync back into the online booking tools and then down into the reservation systems. So, you know, adding something like a new frequent flyer number can easily be done from a mobile device. And of course, it's like carrying world travel in the palm of your hand. So it's one mobile app, right, that you can take with you anywhere as a traveler to help you on your journeys. You can connect with your agent team via email or via um, phone. And then you have all these awesome ancillary features as well attached to your itineraries. Oh, there she is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, in addition, so World Mobile is an excellent solution that's out there for you all today. If you haven't heard from us about getting your travelers on board onto World Mobile, you certainly will hear in the next few weeks. Um, but something new that's coming out to our mobile app is the ability for travelers to download their invoices. So no more having to call an agent um, to get that invoice information. As a user of World Mobile, travelers will be able to go into our app and download those invoices um, and share them off from there. So I know today um, this is a little bit of, a, of an opportunity for us, right, to allow travelers to do this, and we expect here over the next few months to make that available through the app. Um, so our vision right now is that these itineraries will be available for download and sharing through World Mobile um, starting going back until the beginning of this year. So anything booked after January 1st of 23 will be available to be downloaded from World Mobile and then used, of course, in expense platforms. Um, they'll be able to download multiple invoices at once as a user and then share them off via an email functionality. Great. I think that's all the time we have. So thank you very much. Natalie, thank you for stepping in. Yeah, thank you. Well done. Thanks for having me. Right. As always, thank you very much. Uh -huh.